Riding Side Saddle. We're back. Hello, it's Lisa. And Tammy. And we have a special guest. An extra, extra, extra <laughs> special guest. <laughs> oh, as you can hear, this is our first male guest. And this is the first guest that has slept in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> my husband. <laughs> And I'm trying to think, is that true? Have you, have you had sleepovers with anybody well, you, else? Well, I did have sleepovers. I know, but I'm not a guest. Uh, no, and... Deidre. Yeah, you, you oh, slept that's in the true. same bed she with Deidre. That's yeah. true. So, so welcome, Scott. Hi, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Scott is not on our episode today as Lisa's husband, though. No, no, God, no. 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 We're not going there. You're not having marital counseling session. No. That's not what's happening. Oh, here. hell no. Scott is an acupuncturist, so we asked him to come on to talk about um, his area of expertise. Which is acupuncture. It is. <laughs> Just that yeah. one area. That's the only one we want to know about. Yeah. I got the paper and the bill to prove it, so. Yeah. So welcome. Thank you. I'm uh, quite excited to be here. Slash nervous. A little he bit. He shared with us earlier because yeah. he's, he's our first boy guest, first off. Yeah. And secondly, he's been an avid listener, mostly, uh -huh. for, you know, almost the last year that we've been doing this. So Thanks he, for that, Scott. Yeah, he kind of knows what, he kind of knows what he's up against a little bit here. <laughs> he's got nope. some big shoes to fill. <laughs> Many, many of friends have sat in that recording studio seat. Yeah. You mm -hmm. have some big boots to fill. Wow. No pressure. <laughs> None at all. I'm not sweating. Yeah. Well, what's extra funny is when, you know, we have guests coming in for the first time, there's, there's nerves, right? Yeah, for sure. It's, I, for several episodes at the very beginning, like I had nerves every time and now when we have guests come in and they're nervous, we're like, oh, don't worry. You know, fine. this is, it's really just a conversation. We have a couple of drinks, we chat, and then we go and record. And it's just, it's just girls chatting. Well, like two days ago, I'm like, are you ready for this? Are you, are you prepared? <laughs> it's just and girls said, chatting. What? That's what he's afraid of. What are you talking about? Right, right. Do we have something scheduled I forgot again? <laughs> That's kind of the way it goes. Yes. <laughs> Did you realize this is coming up on Monday, right? <laughs> and I said, you mean the week after next, right? No. That's exactly how it went, actually. <laughs> that is exactly how it went. Sometimes I like to poke the bear. Yeah. More often than Lisa appreciates. Uh-huh. We're not talking, We're not about, talking about your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> what we are talking about is a particular um, diagnosis that... Um, Scott is um, versed in and aware of and we thought it was interesting because of the um, number of women that are impacted by it. Um, it is called mast cell activation and we brought Scott in um, to be able to share a little bit of insight and knowledge around that um, in the realm of how he supports it by way of acupuncture. So um, yeah, so, you know, with with that in mind, Scott, I know you had shared with me some statistics specific to women um, around this particular diagnosis when, when you started learning more about it. Well, when I first started learning about it, um, I was taking a training in Washington, D.C. with a doctor, um, Dr. Nadir Solomon, um, I hope I pronounced his name right. I think that was right. Um, for a course in what's called medical acupuncture. Now, there's a lot of different facets of acupuncture. This style is a newer style um, that he discovered recently, and it is able to treat um, mast cell activation syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, and it's... And I'm sorry, and it's focused, like the treatment area is focused in the ear or auricular acupuncture. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there's a lot of different kinds of acupuncture. Um, there's like orthopedic acupuncture, Chinese acupuncture, Japanese acupuncture, Korean acupuncture. There's all kinds of different acupunctures. But this particular is one that's um, 
tied more to Western medicine and the whole body and all the organ systems are tied to the ear. And in this system that I learned through Dr. Solomon was for treating allergies. Mm. Um, in part of this, so he developed this system um, over the last couple decades, I'm guessing. I'm not sure exactly on his, how long he's been doing it, but I, he is an older gentleman, so he has been practicing for quite a long time. Um, but through the allergy treatments, you have to check for this mast cell activation syndrome first. So long story short, short story long, mast cell activation syndrome is you have these mast cells that are in throughout your body in different organs and things like that. If you have the activate if you have this syndrome, you react to allergens more than you actually are allergic to them. So I if kind that of makes sense. Yeah, so I kind of think of it like um, the mast cell is the mothership or or tries to act like the mothership of all allergens. So if you have allergens, if you have allergies and you have the mast cell activation happening, that comes first. Like that's at the top. And then your al your allergen is sort of hidden underneath that because it is masking what you actually might be allergic to. Is that right? Like maybe I have a pollen allergy, for instance, but it might not really bother me, but for the fact that the mast cell is activated and kind of taking over. So what the mast cell does is it reacts to things in a l allergic reaction style, what seems like an allergic reaction, but it's not truly an allergic reaction. These are mm -hmm. cells that shouldn't necessarily be reacting, but they are reacting. Mm. So, so in a perfectly healthy homeostasis situation, there are mast cells in your body. Yes, everybody has these. Okay. So this isn't this isn't something that is like disease of some kind. No, okay. Tissues. Well, well, this is you know a newer thing too. In some of the reading that I've been doing, trying to find um, research, reading. Um, medical review articles and stuff that come with high confidence ratings um, that you can now okay so mind you I'm not a Western medical expert so I'm trying to make these statements from what I learned in a weekend course with Dr. Solomon followed up with the self-education I've done yeah. in a manner which I've been trained to do it and know how to do it in a responsible way rather than just reading anything and everything I find on Google. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that can trigger this that they're starting to understand and you can produce more mast cells than what you're actually supposed to have is if um, you are living a stressful, anxiety-filled life. <laughs> um, Welcome to so, America. Riding side yes. saddle. Yeah. <laughs> and Dr. <laughs> Solomon had told us in the training that his estimate is that well over half of the population has mast cell activation syndrome. In this training, that I think there were 16 of us in the class. I think he tested 12 or 14 of us and there were only two or three of us that didn't test positive mm. for having this um that's a lot that's way more than 50 percent. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And, well and i suppose you know the the you know it wasn't a general population but honestly most people do have crazy amounts of stress that stress might look oh, yeah. different and be classified in you know different aspects of people's lives yeah. or qualified by different people differently but we all live in a really terribly stressful situation sure. most of the time it's so, the american so, social mantra yeah. yeah well right if you're not busy then you're then you're lazy right if you're mm -hmm. not super busy and you're not super stressed out then you must be lazy there's right. something wrong with you right so we've got cortisol we have hormones that aren't balanced at really any age, 
right? Not just perimenopausal, but any age. And then we've got this mast cell thing happening that we don't even really know about. Yeah, it's like in Western science, I think it's like not more than 10 to 15 years old. Yeah. In Western medicine. Interesting. It is interesting. So all of those things, cortisol, unbalanced hormones, activated mast cells, all of that leads to inflammation. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Exactly. So, so when you have an allergy, if it were a straight allergy, you might react to it. Mm -hmm. But because when you have mast cell that is overpowering, it takes that allergy response and it magnifies it. Mm. Is that is that part of what? It can magnify it, or can it can just make it look normal. So, of the patients that I have treated in the what six months that I have been doing this out of my 10 year career um, I have found either once the mast cell is cleared with this treatment um, the allergies or things that they thought they were allergic to either completely go away um, or they diminish in intensity. Hmm. But the idea between all about all of this too is that then once the mast cell is cleared, then you can go in and street, start treating the allergies directly with this um, particular uh, protocol. And then if it works, clear the allergy permanently from the body and the antibodies are gone. Um, wow. Yeah. So, so I have a, a number of questions flooding into my head right now, but the first one, Scott, is how do you, how do you identify um, that, hey, my mast cells are activated? Like what's, what's that process? What are some of the you know, what are some of the things that people would start like a to symptom question? symptom where you would wonder? Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, what's a sim what are symptoms? And then what is a way to test that for sure? Well, to test it for sure, I'm not sure how Western medicine does it exactly. Um, is it a blood test? I'm maybe? assuming it's probably a blood test that's looking for markers or histamine or antibodies or, um, you know, I, I, I really, I have no idea. Okay. It's not my, not my field. Not your jam. Not my jam. <laughs> I'm more chi than jam. <laughs> not cheese. Yeah, chi. No, chi. Chi. <laughs> All right. But there are ways that you test for it. Yeah. But be before that... What are like what are the symptoms that somebody would start to question? You know, I I have felt kind of crummy for a while, and I've tried all of these other things. I've gone to my doctor, and I'm not really getting any mm -hmm. anywhere there. What what are those symptoms? What would that look like where they might start to think mm, there's something else going on? Well, one of the I think definitive, or yeah, one of the factors they look for that can be part of a definitive diagnosis um, is when you amass so many mast cells when you uh, you'll see people that have little red spots all over their skin mm. um, oftentimes that's one of the markers of mast cell no it's like it's it, and it, it looks different than freckles they're very specific. They're perfect, almost like perfectly round on the people that I've seen them on. And there are a lot of them, not just one or two on an arm. There's like a lot, a lot, a lot of them. Huh. Um, they can, you know, um, have anxiety. They can be itchy. Um, but, you know, Dr. Sol Solomon talked about it's inflammation, right? Inflammation so however can that cause, presents. Yeah, it can present in a lot of ways. Like he talked about like PCOS mm. and different things like people who had serious diseases or diagnosed as serious diseases that once the mast cell was cleared, 
Now, mind you, this isn't going to be if you have a serious disease. Oh, my cell's going to, you know, save yeah. my life. Right, right, right. That's right. not what I'm saying. It's just saying, another marker of inflammation. Yes. Right. Exactly. Or another cause of inflammation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And like so many things, you know, with medicine, everybody always wants to know, what's the one thing I'm doing? It's probably a lot of things. Exactly. It? It's never one it's thing. It's never really. one thing. Yeah. It's the whole picture. That's why mm. holistic medicine is different. The, yeah, yeah. Is is a healthy approach. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned it being connected to your ear. Mm hmm Um so I've heard of reflexology, whether on your feet or your hands, how different parts of your of your hands or the bottoms of your feet are related mm -hmm. to different organs yeah. throughout your body, different systems. Your ear is like that too. Yeah. Yeah, and at your ear is actually part of reflexology. So if oh. you go to somebody that's like a true reflexologist yeah. that is trained in all the levels of reflexology, mind you, I'm not a reflexologist either, but um, they'll treat your feet and then they'll treat your hands. I had that done once. And it then actually they'll hurt. treat your. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It does. yeah. They find the. Point they, yeah. where the dysfunction is. They darn near it in there. In there. <laughs> they get right it's left off the there. table. Like, let get a, a knuckle yell. or whatever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh. We're just gonna work that right out for you. <laughs> right now. Just right keep breathing. Here and now. Keep breathing. <laughs> get back on the table. <laughs> Sit in that chair. Right. Oh so, yeah, there's some people that you know get amazing results from reflexology. I mm -hmm. met a woman that's uh, in Belgium that she's a reflexologist. I think she's been uh, working Belgium, with, Wisconsin or yeah, the country? Oh. Belgium, Wisconsin. But she's trained all over Europe and stuff and wow. she's worked with one of the big hospitals down in Milwaukee and she's telling me how she's got well over 3,000 case files or 30. She, just a wow. Wow. ton, ton of case files that she's helped people. You know, so these holistic alternative things, you know. They aren't so alternative. No, not necessarily right. anymore. Well, well they are it, They are an alternative. It's, but it doesn't, it, it's not so unusual anymore. I think it depends how you define alternative, right? Maybe. Yeah. Alternative, alternative meaning different than what Mainstream. I've been doing. Right. Yes, right, right. But here we are again, you know, why can't it just all be medicine? Mm. Because I don't think I have all the answers by any means. If somebody comes to me with a kidney infection, I'm going to say, have you seen your doctor? Are you on antibiotics? If you aren't, get the hell out of here mm. and get to the urgent care or ER and get yourself, you know, get yourself steering checked in out. the right direction. Yeah. With so a, there isn't any one yeah. philosophy that has all the answers. Is that what you're saying? That yes. maybe they work best when... When they're sort of used yes. together in combination, yeah, right, mm -hmm. yes. right. Mm -hmm. So okay, so I'm going to circle us back because you started to talk yeah. about like the different realms of reflexology and auricular treatment is one of those realms, right? Where where there's representation of the body along your whole ear, yeah, right, and they each... just don't use needles, right, oh. right. So, but particular points on your ear are representative of body functions and organs and parts yep. and, and all of those things. Yep. Similar to what you experienced on the table when you yelped yeah. because she, she right. hit a certain spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's the approach. That's how you support the healing of this mast cell activation. Yes. Okay, so back up a little bit though, because you don't do blood tests from your perspective to be able to identify if somebody has mast cell activation syndrome what do you do i do a form of muscle testing that i was taught by dr solomon so i have but now is a few hundred and will probably eventually become a few thousand vials of what are homeopathic representations of different allergens. So they are carrying the bioelectric signature of the allergen. I take that allergen 
They're well, in first, little test tubes. Yes, yes. Little, like, little, what, maybe quarter-ounce vials? Yep. With a little capper on top? Kind of like a, you know, the little samples of perfume you oh, get yeah. at the counter? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It almost exactly. looks like that. Yep. Pretty much exactly. Um, so I use that, and then I muscle test. So, you know, what's yeah, neat about to, to, this, um, the muscle testing, like, that's something, you know, with all the stuff that we do, some of it gets pretty far out there, even for me, and I get into some far out stuff, I think. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, <laughs> we weren't going to talk about our marriage, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're pretty we're not. <laughs> no. Mom's the word. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> Can you exit the no, recording studio for a minute? <laughs> just a minute. <laughs> uh, okay, real uncomfortable. All right. Anyway. So, back to muscle testing. So, muscle testing. What's neat about living in this time and age and doing a lot of this stuff is that Western science is caught up and able to explain on a scientific level why a lot of this stuff works that in the past was referred to as being too far out there or fringe. Yeah. New age, yes. hippie, yes. Yes. weirdo stuff. Yes. Yeah. So we know that when things of a bio electric field or things of a bio electric frequency that we are allergic to when they enter our field um, we can activate the parasympathetic or sympathetic nervous system i.e. fight or flight or rest and digest um, so parasympathetic nervous system is the part of the system that when you're sleeping, when you're resting, is digesting your food, is keeping you breathing, is getting all the nutrients to your body. Sympathetic is the part when the lion comes, it helps you run and focus all of your body's energy into running. So we know through testing that the limbs, the arms and the legs can activate the sympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. So the patient holds this little probe that's connected to this metal honeycomb that I put the allergen in. And then I have their, put their arm out to the side. And before we do anything, I have them put their arm out to the side and I try to push it down and have them resist as hard as they can so I can get a gauge of where their strength is. Then we introduce the allergen into their field um, by having them hold that probe and then I test again and if they're allergic the strength in that arm will be completely gone mm -hmm. now why it's completely gone is because we have activated part of the sympathetic nervous system the part of the sympathetic nervous system that knows that there is an allergen about so that reaction in the sympathetic nervous system is going to be that the body is going to take the blood away from the limbs and put it towards the core of the body and into the brain mm -hmm. so that you have the most amount of oxygen possible in your brain so you can make the smartest and quickest and most rational best for you decision in that moment because there's an invader nearby Yes. Whether it's a, a tiger in the woods yes. or it's a, a pollen yes. that you're allergic to. Yes. Interesting. Oh. Exactly. I've never heard your body it reads that it. way. I haven't either. So your body reads those dangers in the same way. Yes. Because yes. it is actually, I mean, that is dangerous it is a danger, too. Right. So then that, I also think, so I've never been chased by a lion in the woods or elsewhere. Don't plan to? No, <laughs> but I imagine if I were to be chased by some sort of wildlife, I'd once lose. I get, well that too, but, but in I'd the be event, lunch. <laughs> in the event I didn't lose, let's just say hypothetically speaking, when I got to my safe place, I would be exhausted. All of that energy that went to sustain my body during that time of crisis, right? 
is so much, like it's, it's almost too much for me to handle, for my body to handle. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is happening when you are exposed to different allergens that your mm -hmm. body reacts to adversely mm -hmm. over and over and over again. So when we live in a state of exhaustion and fatigue, complete depletion, some of that could be related to being exposed to allergens Your and you don't even realize it. It doesn't always, it doesn't, and I'm, this is a question, it, it doesn't always present in a, my eyes are itchy, my nose is stuffy exactly. sort of way. Exactly. So you may have allergens in your environment that you're not really aware of. You just feel kind of run down and lousy. Exactly. For a long time. Exactly. And you don't even realize that is what's happening. And then exactly. that just becomes your normal. Exactly. Right. And you don't realize how bad you feel until you feel better. Right. And exactly. then you look back and think, man, I really felt terrible. Right. But for like my whole life. <laughs> but, but here's the thing, too, is that here we come back to what I had said before. It's never just one no. thing. Right. So what it comes down to is that poor sympathetic nervous system that's driven by your little adrenal glands those two little tiny organs that work maybe harder than any other organ in the body but they're not designed to i can feel them coughing right now exactly right. Right. Um, <laughs> they're always yes. activated yes but not oh. only by allergens but by our Other pace stress. right by our stress by our drive, by our lack our of busy sleep, life. by our food, Poor nutrition, by blah, 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 and blah, our, blah. And yeah, our phase yeah. in life as women, right? Sure. Because as estrogen yes. goes, oh, is yes. removed yeah. from our system, our ovaries shrivel up, so do our yes. adrenals. <laughs> well, our adrenals kick in, though. Kick in, like yeah. that's, right, but when they're already coughing. Stored up. Right. right, but when we they're don't. already coughing, then they shrivel up right along with your ovaries. Agree, yeah. exactly. agree. And it doesn't matter what lion face is looking at you, no. licking its lips, because it's not going to happen. Yes. <laughs> I got nothing left to give. I'm easy lunch. <laughs> That's why the majority of my patient population is your demographic. Oh, middle-aged. Yep. Yeah. Exhausted. Yeah. Yep. Shriveled up. And looking yep. for answers because it, and this is my experience. I'm not talking about anybody else's. When I would go to my doctor and try to get answers because I know I don't feel well and they don't have any answers for me. It was, uh, you know, it's really frustrating. And I didn't know about acupuncture. I still don't know very much about it, despite the fact that we're related. Um, so it's, it's an alternative to doing nothing or self-diagnosing or finding one doctor after another and hoping this is the one that's going to be able to give you some help. Yeah. Hmm. What is the name of your practice, Scott? Seven Stones Acupuncture and Wellness. And where are you located? Um, I have offices in Cascade and Sheboygan, Wisconsin. That's exciting. Yeah, it is pretty exciting. And it's exciting to be doing it now because a lot of it now is being explained. And, you know, I always say that, you know, you shouldn't discount something because you don't understand it or right. it doesn't make sense just because the science to explain it doesn't exist does not mean that one day the science to explain it won't exist sure i mean look at the first doctor um who said you know maybe we're making all these patients sick because we're not washing our hands between surgeries oh the guy ended up in an insane asylum because he got laughed out that can't of his be true. field. Right. How ridiculous. You know, because he was the first one to think of it. Yeah. Now, you know, we wash our hands. You know, somebody looks at us weird. Right, <laughs> right. Less. If you don't wash your hands. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and on top of it, right, acupuncture just by nature. I mean, you had talked about the different variations and the versions of acupuncture, mm -hmm. but this is three to 5,000 years old, right? This isn't something it's that really somebody new. just came up with last week and said, hey, let's try, let's try this. It's perhaps not documented necessarily here. In a medical journal, for instance. Or here, yeah. right, in this culture right. that is more mainstream Western medicine. Yes, and for something to live that long, what really excites me about my medicine is that, or the medicine that I practice, maybe I should say, um, 
is that if it's going to live that long, it doesn't live that long without evolving. Right. Mm. And it is constantly evolving, especially right now. Like, especially with the auricular and stuff that... This is stuff that our military has been studying. This is stuff that, you know, they use in the battlefield to stop PTSD. Wow. There's so much more happening now than just the stuff... But it all started, you know, 3,000 years ago, sure, 5,000 right. years ago, depending upon who you talk to. Right. I remember as a kid, um, my mom would see a chiropractor, and that was really new age yes. for, for mm -hmm. West Bend, mm -hmm. where I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, like, regular doctors didn't, they didn't understand that. That's not how they were trained. So if you would ask... Well, my chiropractor did this, or I'm thinking about seeing a chiropractor. They would they would not be able to talk to you about that, which to me then makes me feel like maybe it's not a good idea. Yeah. Not that they said it wasn't a good idea. That's just the message that I would receive. But now, there are chiropractors in Western medicine facilities. They work hand in hand now, like you were saying that maybe this works better, best when we have a little of both and we you know collaborate. Yeah. To take care well, yeah. of a patient as a whole holistically yeah. right in combination well, right each patient is unique so just because they present the same doesn't mean that the root of what is causing this presentation is the same right so you can't necessarily treat them the same mm. you know the same pill isn't going to work um necessarily and by pill, you know, I'm not, I'm speaking literally and figuratively. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so I find a lot of my patients, um, you know, I say to them, okay, I work with a couple chiropractors. I can tell, you know, from my examining your back with Twain Ah and from your presentation that you likely have some nerve impingement. Mm. Now, you can pay me this much and we'll get there in X amount of time. But, you know, if you collaborate mm. or allow me to collaborate with, like, a chiropractor, and I have certain chiropractors that I work with, you know, we can get this not... It might seem like more money up front, but we're going to get it knocked out a, a lot quicker. It's a shorter period of time. Right. Yes. Yeah. And you'd and probably pay that amount of money in a longer duration of time, honestly. If not more. Right. So you feel better if not more. in a shorter amount of time. Right. Yes. Right. With the appropriate, it's like my dad always says, you, you have to have the right tool for the job. Right. Right. And he looks at it from an engineering perspective or, you know, a mechanical perspective, but trying to do a job with the wrong tool, right? It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the tool or anything wrong with the job, but they just don't align. Exactly. He would never use a butter knife to hammer in a nail to hang a picture, for right. instance. <laughs> right. Right. I would. I mean, I, I have. <laughs> He would get out a laser level and he would bring out his tool belt and get the right nails for the right hanger for the right hammer. I get out the butter knife and I eyeball it. <laughs> Uncle Dave, sorry. No. Dad definitely would not do that. But to your point, right, the right tool for the job is going right. to get you a better result. For sure. Exactly. All right. So... So I'm going to pull us back in because we're kind of talking about acupuncture in general and the relationship with Western medicine, which is super awesome. And I'm glad that we are. But I want to pull us back towards this auricular treatment. So mm -hmm. you had talked about um, doing muscle testing mm -hmm. and the process of doing that for um, identifying not only um, mast cell activation syndrome, but all, that's the same process you use to identify is somebody having an true allergic reaction to a particular thing yes. whether it's gluten or pollen or bees or cats yeah, yeah like right. like a whole host of different types of allergens and you can test for those types of things mm -hmm. um, just by doing this muscle testing so muscle testing is used in many 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 different ways right by different um, practitioners you can also do muscle testing yourself mm -hmm. like like testing your supplements to make sure that your body is in alignment with that particular mm. supplement going into the grocery store and holding a piece of food 
um, and determining whether or not that is appropriate for your body at that time. Mm. So muscle testing, oh yeah, muscle testing is a very broad mm -hmm. way to like diagnose. Mm -hmm. It's listening to your body, mm. right? Um, but but in in this situation, this is specific to you know, is this something that we need to treat? right, from a mast cell activation or an allergen type of situation. So once you've identified, based on that person's level of resistance, able to, you know, withstand you pressing down and, and f kind of fight using their muscles against it, then what? So once we've identified what the allergen is, then um, we test to determine, okay, is this a true allergen? Or is this just presenting as something that's toxic to the body? So you can be allergic to something, which means that you have antibodies in your blood that when it enters your blood or enters your field, the antibodies react, histamines are released or uh, whatever is released that causes the um, reaction. Um, the allergic reaction. However, there are certain substances that we might think we're allergic to, but we're not necessarily allergic to. We're, they're just like toxic to us or poisonous to us, if mm. you will, to put it in very simple terms. Like because of our genetic makeup, this is something that, um, you know, is just toxic to us. So I just don't tolerate it very well. So it would be like the difference between someone who has maybe a sensitivity to gluten and someone who has a serious allergy. Or nuts, for instance. No, yeah, maybe, you, maybe yeah, I feel a little yeah. stuffy when I eat peanuts, but my throat doesn't close up. It's not necessarily... Not like that even? Not necessarily going to present it can present on different levels okay like you can react very severely or you can react mildly and it might either be a toxicity or it might be an allergy but this then we determine that because then we use a different homeopathic vial and then we introduce it to the torso of the body the torso of the body we can use by putting things into its field and it's bioelectric signature, um, and that can activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest. So they're holding the allergen in their hand, which is the sympathetic nervous system. Then I put the probe or whatever on their chest, and I put in a homeopathic um, vial for allergy, and I'll muscle test them again and if it's really an allergen um, then they will have strength in that arm if it's a toxicity and when I put the toxicity vial in and test for whether or not it's a toxicity and they go to resist um, they will have strength or they won't they won't, they won't have, have they strength. won't have strength yeah if it's the toxicity vial um so then that determines okay it's an allergy or it's just something that you are pre genetically predisposed just you have a genetic predisposition to this is not good for you just stay the hell away from it scott is it something that you can be introduced to something over and over and over again and your system just can't manage it because of how often you've been exposed to it yes yes so that so can be yeah so that yeah thank you that's the word it's cumulative toxicity is that is that a thing or is it well, like no cumulative um it becomes well i'm not sure as far as the toxicity part goes okay but i do know that you can become develop true allergies to things over time and the um, you know you can be allergic to something and you never know when is going to be the incident that it elevates it to an actual anaphylactic reaction yes versus just mm -hmm. an allergic reaction okay All so right. once we determine what it is if it's an allergy then 
the auricular part comes in. So there is a set a section in the interconcha of the ear that's like the inside part where you give a person a wet willy or just behind the wet willy <laughs> part there. Um, <laughs> Not that um, you've ever done that, I'm yeah, sure. No, never to my wife. Um, I think people in other countries are going to be Googling what is a wet, wet willy. willy. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. Here you go, Singapore. Um, so when the allergen is in the field, um, the, part, the organ in the body that m is most affected by an allergic reaction or where things are stemming from is the liver. Mm -hmm. So then I use what's an, a, little, a little electrical probe that can sense electrical conductivity. And I start probing around in the ear lightly with this metal probe, um, the area that is represented that I know is the liver. And I will all of a sudden find a spot that is very conductive and a little buzzer will go off on my um, machine that I'm using. <clears throat> so it's also important like when people come for this treatment not to wash their ears first because they can get rid of the oils and stuff. So when you have dysfunction in the organ, um, that part of the ear you'll find areas that become very electrically sensitive because they'll also be sore there'll be like little oil secretions there and stuff like that so then i put a little needle in that spot and then muscle test again and if it's the right spot when i muscle test them with the allergen in their presence they'll have strength and it'll be like they're not allergic to it anymore, mm -hmm. according to the test. So the test becomes negative where it was positive before. And then we've identified that spot. All right. So talk about these little needles, because when people think of needles, if they're not familiar with acupuncture, or even if they are, but have never had auricular acupuncture before, like talk about talk about how little these needles are okay so acupuncture needles in general um, you can often fit two to three dozen regular acupuncture needles into the tip of a hypodermic needle they're super small they're not much bigger than your hair the ones that I use are 0.2 millimeters thick for regular acupuncture. for regular acupuncture mm -hmm. these needles um, I think are 0.16 and they're and only three they're only three millimeters long yeah in fact with me short. getting ready to turn 50 the most challenging part of this treatment for me is being able to see mm. these needles they are so small they're they almost tiny. remind me of like um when a light bulb bursts like when it breaks mm -hmm. and the filament the that filament. like dangles around oh. in there it looks i mean it it's that it's, thin it's, yeah yeah it's yeah, really it's, tiny and it's a stainless steel little needle so um i've gotten to indulge my boy side and i've purchased all kinds of funky looking headgear with headlight <laughs> with lights on it and magnifying glasses so i can see what Mad the heck i'm doing look. <laughs> sure it does yeah we should let your eyebrows grow really wild too because that they would really are. that would really enhance the mad scientist they look a little Albert Einstein look going on. <laughs> so I place one of those needles in that spot that we identified is the spot in the liver that is activated by the allergen. And I place it in, it's called an intradermal needle. As I said, it's only three millimeters long, so it's super small. And I place it in kind of you know, you think about when you put a needle in that you're like putting it in perpendicular. I don't put this in perpendicular. I put it in at a slight angle and then press it against the skin and slide it in the rest of the way oh. so that it's going exactly between the skin and the cartilage into an mm. area where generally you really, you're not even going to feel it. And then I put it in place with some surge or uh like dermabond type stuff adhesive adhesive yeah and 
little band-aids that are these tiny little circles that are about I don't know a quarter inch yeah they're like how smaller than the tip of your finger yeah. yeah and we plaster those in and then that stays for three weeks and then after three weeks we test retest to see if it has cleared the allergen or not um, and usually it has or there's at least an 80 to 90 percent reduction in the severity of the symptoms from the allergy now hmm. some people too then we have to test like say someone's allergic to dogs and like you know treat them and we find you know we cancel out that allergy well and then we treat they come back and test again and they're still allergic to dogs well when we test for dogs or cats where you could might be allergic to the dander you might be allergic to the saliva you might be allergic to the feces you know you there's a number of things so you might you know have developed a different allergen in that meantime once the other one was cleared so you have to drill down a little bit yeah sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes not always it's fascinating it is fascinating yeah so one of the things that if anybody wants to check out um, an actual study there was a study done on this particular treatment at the um, uh, University of Kentucky Louisville Medical School where they did a study on alpha-gal allergy. So now alpha-gal is a um, substance that exists in red meat, in protein, oh. that with certain tick bites with Lyme oh, disease, yeah, you can that. develop mm -hmm. an allergy to protein enough so that you eventually become anaphylactic to all proteins and it can kill you. Yikes. Right. Yeah. Right. That's well, an essential element. Like this, you need protein. Right? This is one of the only treatments that's known to um, be able to cure it. Wow. And, and here we come again, living in this age, mm -hmm. Western science catching up. So they were actually able to take this, you know, study group, do blood work, identify that the antibodies for alpha-gal allergen were in the blood, and then after the treatment, after that needle sat there for three weeks, um, and they pulled it out, they tested the blood again, and the antibodies were gone. It's amazing. That is and amazing. And now Western medicine only has one or two, um, you know, pharmaceutical drugs that can actually get antibodies out of the blood, and it's a pretty oftentimes ugly process mm -hmm. and dangerous mm -hmm. process for the patient. Mm -hmm. um, that detoxing. Yeah. 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 Ooh, that's yeah, fascinating. So this is, it is it's, fascinating. It's kind of a big, it's a pretty big deal. It is a big deal. You know? It could be a real game changer for people. Yeah, it could be. Well, and lots of people manage allergies. Like there's a whole slew of different types of allergies oh, sure. and, you know, over the counter or prescription medication mm -hmm. or shots or, you know, and living to the point that you had said earlier, Tammy, just kind of living in a sub substandard or or just not well state right for their whole life right i i am married to somebody who has terrible allergies he is he's i i would say if i felt the way that he seems to feel to me i would feel miserable yeah. it's like having a cold all, all the, the time, time. Uh, people who've had sinus surgery after surgery trying to clear it out because it just keeps building to the point where now they can't breathe again. Yeah. Um, this could maybe give them some relief change, in a different way. It would change your life. Uh, yeah, I would think. Yeah. I would think. Gosh. Yeah. This is fascinating. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, Yeah. It's a big deal. It I is think. a big deal. It's a very big deal. So, if somebody wanted to uh, check this out with you, how could they find you? Oh, they could get to my website, which is um, sevenstonesacupuncture.com. 
or they could email me at sevenstones.acupuncture at gmail.com. Yeah. There's, so, of course, local to our area, right? Mm -hmm. um, that is a really good resource. Also, through this class that you had taken, there's like a national or maybe even international list. Like a of registry practitioners? of practitioners? Yeah. Or? Yes, uh, on Dr. Solomon's website. Um, we can, maybe you can put it in... Yeah. You know, the feed or whatever with the post. In our but, show notes, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I think, alternativemedicine.com. I'm not sure about that. But All right, you'll check okay. in and we'll, we'll, check yeah, it in our, he's, we'll put it in our yeah, show Yeah, if you notes. go there and there's, um, there's a list of all the practitioners that are certified in this, in each individual state, and I'm guessing countries. I'm not sure. That's fine. We'll check that out. We'll put it, we'll add it. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks, husband. <laughs> You're welcome, wifey. Very, very good. Nice job, Scott. Thank for you. For being me. the first male in our studio. <laughs> nice work. No, really, it was a privilege and an honor. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for agreeing to be on, on with us. It's all of this sort of stuff is not something that, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, completely unaware but i'm i absolutely know next to nothing yeah this so is... thanks for sharing all of that really interesting um alternative medicine i love that thanks no problem and thanks to todd at mind garden media for That's putting right. our podcast together if you need one need a guy who does you know podcast work he's your guy so you've been the first man in the recording studio but Todd really has been like the man that has supported the recording the man behind the through curtain. this whole time <laughs> yeah. so thank you yeah for sure <laughs> and thanks to our listeners also thank you for st sticking with us we're coming up on a year not we quite are. there yet but dun, we're getting dun, dun. close today I saw that we had some downloads in Hungary oh welcome Hungary <laughs> that's amazing thanks for following along yeah so Appreciate thanks for that. sharing. Thanks for talking about us. Thanks for subscribing and liking and all of that stuff. So um, if you if uh, you want to reach out to us, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram, Riding Side Saddle Podcast on Facebook, Riding Side Saddle The Podcast on Instagram. Um, we're so, all over. Yeah, we're around. Yep, just, just search us out. We're on YouTube and Spotify and yep. Audible, all sorts of places. We'll so, be there. Yeah. Until next time then. Bye. See ya. Bye, Scott. Bye. <laughs>